Do you want to build mobile, desktop or web applications without any coding? Then welcome to this course. In this course you will learn to use Flutterflow for building no code applications from scratch. Flutterflow is a platform using which we can build mobile applications without learning any programming language. So inside this course we are going to build 4 different applications in Flutterflow from scratch. So firstly, we are going to build a simple application called I am rich. So this will be a single screen application and while building it, we will cover some basic introduction of Flutterflow. After that, we are going to build our counter application. So in this application, user can increase the counter value, decrease it and also clear it. And while building this application, you will learn to add and handle actions in Flutterflow applications. And after the notes application, we are going to build our first multi-page application called notes. And in this application, we are going to use Firebase for storing, editing, deleting and fetching notes. So in this application, user can type a new note and then he can save it in Firebase. And then we are going to load all the save notes inside our application inside a list view. After that, if user want to delete a particular node, then he can click on this delete button and the node will be deleted. And if he want to see the detail of a node, then he can click on it and we are going to open that node detail inside a new screen. And here, if he want to edit the content of a node, he can click on this edit button and then this note update screen will be opened. And here he can update the content of a note and then save or update the note inside database. So while building this application, you will learn the complete integration of Firebase inside Flutterflow applications. After that, we are going to build our fourth application of this course and it is a Gemini clone. So in this application, user will type his question and send it to Gemini. And then Gemini will gonna generate the response and we are going to show that response to the user on screen. And for building this application, we will integrate the API of Google Gemini inside Flutterflow. So after completing this course, you will be able to build responsive and smart applications in Flutterflow and you will be able to integrate Firebase inside Flutterflow applications. Apart from that, you will be able to integrate APIs inside Flutterflow to build smart next generation applications. But one important question is who can take this course? So if you are someone who want to build mobile, desktop or web applications without learning any programming language, then this course is for you. So basically there is no prerequisite to take this course. So what are you waiting for? Join the course now and start building your dream application today. And now let's start by creating first Flutter application of this course. And to do that, we need to firstly open Flutterflow. And to open Flutterflow, open your browser and type Flutterflow here. Now in the search result, open this link, which is this flutterflow.io. And this will gonna open the official page for Flutterflow. So here, if you have opened Flutterflow for the first time, then click on this start for free. And it will gonna show you the sign up page. And now here you can enter your details or you can simply sign in using your Google, Apple, GitHub or Microsoft account. So we will proceed with the Google account. So click on the sign in with Google and then provide the details of your Google account. And once you will provide the credential, you will be logged in into Flutterflow. So now we have logged in and I can see my existing projects here. So in your case, there will not be any project here. So now in order to create a new project, you need to click on this create new button. And then it will gonna show you the templates which you can select and use inside your projects. Like firstly, we got this meal planner and it got 14 screens. And by just simply clicking on this use sample, we will be able to use this template and then customize it as per our needs and then we got this wallet application and below we got this social media application and so on 
So as our first application, we are going to select this blank or empty template here. But before selecting this blank template, we need to type the name of our application here. So as our first project, we are going to build a very simple application called I am rich. And the story behind this application is very interesting. So basically in the early days of app development, some developer created a very simple single screen application called I am rich. And then he published it on app store for $1000 and the interesting thing is some people also bought that application so basically the application has no use at all it is just showing a single screen and in the middle of screen there is a diamond icon and below that there was a text I was rich so basically it tried to become a status symbol that if you got that application then you must be rich and that idea triggered as well but later Apple has removed that application from app store similarly if if you will open play store there you will be able to find similar I am rich applications and these are basically simple applications with just some picture and some text and now we are going to build our own I am rich application so here we need to type the name of our application so I will gonna name it like I am rich and after that click on this create blank button and after that you will see this screen and here you can firstly see the project name and then the package name so this package name is very important and it is a unique identifier which is used when we publish application or app store or install it inside real devices so now after that you can select the theme of the application so we will stick with the default theme here and then if you want to use firebase or backend database inside your application then you can enable this feature so as we are not going to use database inside this application so we will simply disable it and now click on the start building and you will be able to see this screen here so as we have created a new flutter flow project and we have selected an empty template so that's why we can see this screen and there is nothing inside it but now we can drag different views or widgets inside this screen and they will be visible here like if inside our flutter application we want to display an image then from the side pane we can drag this image widget and put it here so basically views in flutter are called widgets and they are used to display different things on screen like in case of our I am rich application we want to display a diamond image on screen and below that we want to display the text I am rich and to do that we need to simply drag a text widget and an image widget on this screen and all of these widgets are available in the widget palette section of this side pane so here let's firstly drag this text widget and put it on the screen and once you will do that you can see this hello world text here so this is the default text and now if you want to change this text with the text like I am rich then in this right side you can see this pane and here you can change different properties of this text widget like firstly we can see this text section so here we can change the text so we are going to display the text I am rich so I will gonna make the change here and after that you can see the text is changed here as well similarly if you will scroll down you can see the option for the text size so here we got this font size font family and other options so let's for now simply change the font size to like 20 and after that you can see the font size is increased and we are going to explore different properties later but now we have added a text widget inside our screen which is displaying the text I am rich but now we want to display this I am rich text in the middle of screen and to do that what you need to do is to click on this widget tree here and when you will do that you will be able to see the structure of your screen so we got only single screen and the title of this screen is home page and then inside it we got a widget called column so column widget in flutter is used to hold multiple widgets and it is used to arrange multiple widgets vertically like if we are going to add two widgets inside a column widget then they will be displayed below one another 
and here at this moment we have added a text widget inside this column widget. But now if we want to display this text in the middle of screen then you need to click on this column widget and this column will be selected. And now we can see the properties of this column widget here. So now you need to scroll down and you will find this main axis alignment. So basically this option is to select the alignment of the column widget on screen. And for now the first option is selected which is start. So everything which we are going to put in the column widget will appear at the start of screen. But if we will select the center option then you can see this I am rich text is now in the middle because we have selected the main axis alignment to center. Similarly, if you will select this end option, you will be able to see now the text is being displayed in the bottom. So by using this main axis alignment, you can change the position of the widgets which are being displayed inside a column widget. But now in order to display this column widget in the center of the screen, you got this alignment here. So here you need to click on the box where you want to display this column widget. So as we want to display it in the center of screen, so we are going to select the center box box and now you can see the column widget is in the center. So hopefully you got the idea that inside column widget we can place multiple widgets and they will be arranged vertically. And then if you want to change the position of those items then you can select the main axis alignment and the position of children of column widget will be changed. And to change the position of column widget itself we can use this alignment box. So now after putting this I am rich text the next thing which we are going to add is an image and to do that we got two options. So the first one is we can go to this widget palette and here we can drag an image widget and put it on our screen. And the second one is we can go to widget tree and here for this column widget we can see this add a child to this widget button. So click on it and you will be able to see available widget. So now we are going to select this image widget and it will be added on screen inside this column widget. But now you can see the text is being displayed above this image and the reason is the order in which we have added them inside this column widget. So if we want to display this image above this text you can simply drag this image and then you can place it above this text and the position will be changed. So now after adding this image widget we want to display our diamond image inside this widget. And to do that here you can select the image and then in the side pane you can scroll down and you will find this image type. So here the type selected is network. So if you want to display the image using some URL then you can simply place that URL here and the image will be loaded here. But if you don't want to display the image from the internet and you want to display the image from the app sources then you need to select this assets option here and once you will select that you need to upload your image and that image will be added in the resources of this application. So click on this upload image button and then select the image which you want to display. Like in our case we are going to select this image. And there you can see once we have selected this image the image is visible on screen. And you will find the same image in the resources of this lecture. So you can simply take that image and then upload it here. And now after doing that you can see we got this beautiful diamond image and this text in the middle of screen. So as I told you earlier that inside column widget these widgets are arranged vertically. And to change the position of the child you can play with this main axis alignment. So now here you can see this fourth option and this is to evenly space children's of column. So if you will select it you can see both of them are positioned at an equal distance. Similarly there is an option called space around so when you will select it you can see the difference. Similarly the last one is space between and it added maximum space between all the widgets available in the column. So now you can see the image is at the top and the text is in the bottom. But we are going to stick with this space evenly because it is looking good to me. So now after creating this application if you want to run it then you need to click on this blue icon on the top right corner. So click on it and it will gonna start a new screen where you will be able to see your application running.
and there you can see we got our application running here so basically here we can see how our application will gonna look like when it will be installed on a real device so here we got this beautiful diamond image and below that we got this text and once you will click on this icon your application will be launched and after that whatever changes we are going to make in the GUI they will be visible here upon click on this instant reload like here we are going to change the background color of our application so select this home page and after that you can see this background color property and here for now this primary background is selected but let's apply some other color like this particular color and after that move to that screen and here click on this instant reload and there you can see the changes are applied and the background color is changed similarly you can play with different properties of these widgets and make changes in the GUI but now we have completed our very own first application in Flutterflow subscribe to this channel and get 92% off on our Flutterflow for beginners the complete 2024 course link is given in the description so now let's start building our second application of this course and that is a counter application. So we are going to build this simple looking counter application in Flutter and here you can simply click on this plus icon to increase the value on screen and then you can click on minus icon to decrease the value. And while building this application you will learn to perform different actions upon clicking on different views. So now let's start. So to build this application firstly we are going to move to our Flutterflow dashboard and then click on this create new button and here we are going to name our project so I will name it as my counter and then select this create blank. After that here we are going to disable this firebase because we are not going to use it yet and then click on this start building and now we got this screen. So now here we are going to start by creating a simple GUI of our application. So as earlier we have placed a simple text on screen. So now we are going to do the same. So here we are going to drag a text view and we are going to put it here. And after that inside this text view we are for now going to display a number zero and once we will do that you can see this text here and after that we are going to increase the font size to like something 150 similarly here if you want to apply a different font family you can click here and then select the font family which you want to apply like if I will select this Roboto Mono you can see the text is changed because zero is displayed like that in this particular font family. But we are going to use this open sense and now you can see it is changed. So after adding this text we are going to display it in the middle of screen and to do that you know the drill. So you can simply pause the video at this point and then make changes to display this text in the middle of screen. And now let's do that. So firstly we will go to widget tree and here we are going to select the column widget and after that we are going to select its alignment to the center and now we are going to select this main axis alignment to the middle. Now this text is being displayed in the center. So now after displaying this text the next thing is adding our plus and minus icon and to do that inside this column widget we are going to add a widget called row. So here search for row and you can see this row widget. So row widget is similar to the column widget but it arranges its children horizontally. So if we are going to place multiple widgets inside it they will be arranged horizontally and as we want to display the minus icon here and after that we want to display the plus icon so that's why we added this row widget. And now inside this row widget we are firstly going to display the plus icon. So to do that you can click on this add child button and then you can search for an icon widget here and there you can see this widget so simply select it and there you can see the widget is added and it is displaying this default setting icon so after selecting this icon here you can scroll down in the window and select the icon which you want to display so click here 
and it will gonna show you all available icons so there are more than 8000 icons which you can use and as we are looking for a plus icon so I will search for add and you can see multiple icons here so we are going to select this first one and there you can see the icon is added similarly if you want to change the icon size like we are going to increase it to 40 there you can see it is visible more clearly now but now after adding this icon if we want to add a circular border around it then a simple way is to enclose this icon widget inside a widget called card so here to do that click on this plus icon for this row and add a card widget so here we are going to search for card and then we are going to select it and there you can see this card widget is added and now we are simply going to drag this icon and put it inside this card widget and once we will do that now you can see a circular border and shadow is added around this icon widget and the reason is this card widget has these properties by default so it has circular corners and then it also got this shadow and we can change these properties here like here if the card is selected and you will scroll down you can see this border radius so as we want to make this button circular so we are going to select some large radius here like we are going to select 40 here and now you can see it is completely circular similarly if you want to change the background color of this card you can also change it here but we are going to keep the default color so now after adding this icon here the next thing is adding the minus icon and to do that what we are going to do is to simply create a copy of this card widget and then change the icon of this icon widget and to do that you can right click on this card and then select this duplicate and now you can see there are two card widgets and two plus icons so now for the left one we are going to select the icon widget inside it and now we are going to change the icon here so here if you will search for rule then you will be able to see this image or icon similar to minus so you can select any of them like i will gonna select this one and there you can see the icon is changed so now after adding the plus and minus icons we need to position them in such a way that the minus icon will be somewhere here to the left and the plus icon will be to the right and to do that we are going to select this row widget and similar to the column widget we got this main axis alignment here and here we are going to select this space evenly and it will gonna space them evenly similarly you can also try to select other options as well but now after doing that our GUI is almost ready but one change which we can make is selecting the column widget and then setting the main axis alignment to space evenly to position them at a reasonable distance and now our screen is looking much better so now after building the GUI the next thing is incrementing this value once user is clicking on this plus icon and decrementing it or decreasing it once user is clicking on this minus icon so to do that the first thing is we need to change the static value here so for now you can see we are displaying a static value 0 inside this text widget but now we don't want to display this static value 0 but instead we want to change the value based upon user actions and to do that inside this text widget we are not going to pass a static value but instead we are going to pass a variable so in flutter or in programming you can consider a variable as a box inside which a particular value can be stored like now we want a box where a particular value can be stored and then later the value can be changed so to add a variable inside our application you need to go to this side pane and select this app values and then here you need to click on this add app state variable and here you need to assign the name to this variable like we are going to use this variable to store the count so we are going to name it as count and after that the second thing is the data type so based upon the value which we are going to store inside this variable we need to assign a data type like inside this variable we are going to store a numeric or integer value so here we are going to select the data type to integer similarly if you want to store some text then you need to select string here and if you want to store some fractional value then you can select double similarly there are other data types as well but now after 
selecting this count and then this integer you can click on this create button and a new variable with the name count will be created and here you can assign a default value to this variable so in our case we are going to assign the value 0 because we want our variable to contain 0 at the start so now after creating this variable you can move back to this widget tree and then here you can select the text widget and here you can click on this icon and here you need to select the source that from which source you want to get the value and display it inside this text widget so select this app state and there you can see the variable which we created so simply select this count variable and then here you need to add the default value which will be visible on screen for our GUI so we are going to add 0 here and then click confirm and now the value of count will be displayed inside this text widget as the default value is 0 so we can see it here but now after displaying the value of variable inside this text widget the next step is changing that value upon click on this button so now we need to detect when user is clicking on this card widget or on this icon and to do that you need to select the card widget and here you need to move to actions so basically we can add different actions on a widget inside flutter and those actions are used to detect when user is clicking on a particular widget long clicking on it double clicking on it or so on so click on this add action button and then you need to select the action which you want to add like we want to detect when user is clicking on this icon or on this card widget so we are going to select this own tab and after that you need to select the operation which you want to perform once user will gonna tap on this card widget so to select the option you need to click on this state management because we have earlier created a state variable and now we need to change the value of that state variable so we are going to select state management here and then select this update app state and after that you will see this add field button so you need to click here and then select the field which you want to change upon click of this button so select the count field here and then you need to select the type of update which you want to perform so here in this drop down you can see three options we can either set the value of this field clear the value or either increment it or decrement it so as we want to increment it so we will select this option and then we need to select the increment value so as we want to increase it by one so we will gonna select one here and that's it so now after doing that if we are going to run our application and you are going to click on this button you will be able to notice that the value here will gonna change and the reason is we have created a state variable inside our application with the name count and then inside our application whenever user is clicking on this card widget we are updating the app state and while updating our app state we are incrementing the value of this count variable by one so now to test the working of this application simply click on this button and our application will be running here in test mode so now our application is running here so now let's test it by clicking on this button and there you can see when I click the value here is increased similarly click here again and there you can see this value is increasing so it means that our application is working correctly and we are able to add action to this button successfully so now after testing our application the next thing is decrementing this value once user is clicking on this card widget and to do that we need to add action on the second card widget and then we need to decrement the value of our state variable so you should pause this video and try to do it by yourself and if you stuck somewhere then follow me on this lecture so now on this button we want to add an action so select this card view and here go to the actions window now we are going to add an own tab action and after that we need to select the action which we want to perform so we want to update the app state so select the state management then this update app state and now here we need to select the field which we need to update upon click on this button so we are going to select this count field because we only got one state variable or state field inside our application so select it and then we need to select the update type so we are going to select this increment decrement and 
and here we are going to decrement the value by 1 and to do that we are going to add minus here so basically each time this button will be pressed the value minus 1 will be added inside this value so this will basically going to reduce this value and it will be a decrement operation so now after doing that you can simply go to the test mode and click on this instant reload and there you can see our application is hot reloaded so let's increment the value and now click on this button and there you can say the value is being reduced so it means that our application is working correctly similarly after making both of these buttons functional you can try to add a reset button inside our application GUI and upon click on this button you can set the value of this variable to zero so this is something which you can do at this point so try to Take this task as your first assignment of this course and after doing that you can share the results in the course discussion section and show us the beautiful GUIs which you have built for the counter application. Subscribe to this channel and get 92% off on our Flutterflow for Beginners, the complete 2024 course. Link is given in the description. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to add a simple text reset between these two buttons and when the user will gonna click on it, we are going to reset the value of this variable. So this is your assignment, so you should try to do it by yourself. But if you are stuck somewhere, then you can follow me on this lecture. So now to display the text in the middle of these two buttons, what you can do is to simply add a text widget inside this row. So we are going to select this text and there you can see the text hello word is added. But as we want to display it between these two buttons, so we are going to simply drag it and put it here. And now it is in the middle. And after doing that, we are going to change the value of this variable to like reset. And then we are going to change the text color to red because reset is usually displayed in red color. So select this primary text and then you can select the color using this slider. So we are going to select this red color and that's it. So now after selecting this color, the next thing is detecting when the user is clicking on this text. And to do that, we are going to select this text and then go to actions. And here we are going to add an own tab action on this text. After that, we need to select the action or the thing which we want to perform. So go to state management and click on this update app state. And here we need to select the variable which you want to update upon clicking on this button. And now you need to select the update type which you want to perform. So we are going to select set value here and then we are going to set the value to zero. And that's it. So now by doing that, each time we are going to click on this reset button, we will be setting the value of this count variable to zero. And now to test this application, you can simply click on this instant reload. And our application will be installed here in just few seconds. So there you can see the application is installed. So let's increment the value and now click on this text. And there you can see as soon as I clicked here, the value here is changed. So it means that now this functionality is also working. So now let's start building our notes application. And to do that, we are going to create a new project on Flutterflow. So let's name this project like my notes. And after that, we are going to select this create blank. And here you can confirm the project name and the app package name. And then make sure that set of Firebase is enabled. And the reason is we are going to use Firebase database to store our notes data. So as we are building a notes application in which user will gonna create and save different notes. So we are going to store the data of notes on an online database and that database is provided by Firebase. And Firebase is actually a company which provide a lot of cloud computing related functionalities. And one of the functionality is online database. And we are going to use this database for storing our data online. So here after enabling it, click next and here you need to provide the project ID for Firebase. So basically you need to create a project on Firebase first and then attach that project with Flutterflow. And to create that project, you can open your browser and then you can search for Firebase. In the search results, you can go to this first link firebase.google.com. 
and there you can either click on this get started button and after that attach your google account and if you have already attached it then you will see this go to console button so click there and it will gonna open the dashboard for firebase so once the dashboard is opened you will be able to see your existing firebase projects so if you have logged in for the first time then you will see this create a project button so simply click there to create a new project and we are going to name this project like my notes and after that press continue and then here we can disable this google analytics because we are not going to use it for our project and then click on this create project to create a new firebase project so now our firebase project is ready so click continue and it will gonna open the details for our new project so after creating this project click on the setting button and then go to users and permission and here we need to give permission to flutterflow so that flutterflow can make changes in this project and to do that you will click on this add member and then you need to type firebase at the rate flutterflow.io and after that you need to select the role to editor so basically we are giving permission to flutterflow so that flutterflow can make changes inside our firebase project and we need these permissions because later we are going to store the data of our application and that application is built in flutterflow and using that application we are going to store delete or update data in the firebase database so that's why we need to give editor permission to flutterflow so here after doing that click on this add member and there you can see the role is assigned so now after doing that you can click on this setting button and then go to project setting and here you will see your project id so simply copy this project id and then open your flutterflow project and here you need to paste the id of your firebase project and after doing that click on this connect button and it might show you this error and the reason is there is a space before this name so make sure that there is no space so i will gonna remove it and then click connect and it will gonna connect our flutterflow project with firebase and there you can see we got this icon which means that our flutterflow project is connected with firebase and after doing that you need to click on this complete firebase setup button and then here you need to select this generate file and it will gonna generate all the configuration files required to use firebase inside our flutter project so now after creating a new project and connecting it with firebase the next step is building a simple gui for our application so as inside our application we want to create a node and store it on firebase so to do that we need such view where user can type the text of a node and that view in flutter is called text field so we need to add text field on our screen and after that we need to add a button so that user can click on that button and then the node information which user entered here will be saved so here firstly we are going to add a widget in which user can type a text and this widget is called text field so search for text field here and you will find this widget so simply drag this widget and put it on screen and once you will do that you can see this view here so now in this widget user can type the information or the text of a node and to see it clearly what we can do is to quickly run our application in test mode so that we can see things as we are adding them inside our application so now our application is running here and you can see this widget on screen and when you will click on it then you can type any text that you want to add like i will add my note here and you can see this text so now after adding this widget the next step is adding a save button to the right of this widget so that user can type the content of the note and after that he can click on that save button to store this note inside database so to add this button to the right of this widget what we need to do is to firstly enclose this widget inside a row widget and as you know we use row widget to arrange elements or multiple widgets horizontally on screen so to do that you can go to the widget tree and then here you can see we got a column widget which contain this text field 
but now inside this column widget we are going to add a row widget so select this row widget and you can see this row is added and after that you can simply drag this text field and put it inside this row widget and once you will do that you can see now this text field is inside this row widget and after that we can add an icon widget inside this row widget and that icon will gonna display a save icon to the right of this widget so here you can click on this button and then you can search for an icon widget here so there you can see this widget so simply add it and you can see this default setting icon is added but we need to show a save icon here so scroll down and here change the icon to save so we can search for a save icon here and then you can use any of the icon which you like so i will gonna use this one and now you can see this icon is added and after adding this icon you can either increase its size like i will gonna set the size to 30 here and then you can see it is visible quite well similarly if you want to add some space around this icon then you can check this padding property so by using this padding property we can add space around a widget on all the sides so here if you want to add padding to the left side then you can type the left value here like we will gonna type 5 and after that if you want to add padding to the right then you can type the value here but instead of specifying these paddings for all sides separately you can either select this uniform padding and then set a value here and it will be applied on all the sides like here i will gonna use this slider and i will gonna add a padding of 8 and there you can see once i selected the value 8 you can see a space is added around this icon and now it is looking much better so now after doing that we have set up the simple gui for creating a new node so here user will gonna type the information of node and then he will gonna click on the save button and the node text will be stored inside our database so to do that we need to firstly open our firebase project and then here you can go to project overview after that you can expand this build section and you will find this firestore database so the database functionality of firebase is called firestore so simply click here and you will find the screen so here we need to firstly create or enable database so click on this create database and then you will see this dialog and here you can select the location of your database so we are going to use united states but if you want to use europe or any other location you can select it and then click next and after that if you want to use this database inside an application which will be published on app store or play store then you should start it in production mode and if you are building for the testing purposes then you can select this start in test mode so as we are building this application for our course so i will select this test mode then click create and our database is created and there you can read your database is ready to go just add data so now inside this database we can store our data but to do that we need to firstly create table or collections inside database so if you are familiar with database then you know that inside database we can create multiple tables and then inside each table we can add multiple columns and then for each column we can have multiple rows and if you are not familiar with the database concept then things will be clear for you once we will proceed in this course but now after creating our firebase database move back to our flutterflow application and there inside our database we need to create a table or a collection and to do that you can click on this firestore icon and here you need to click on this create collection and it will gonna create a table inside our database and here we can assign any name to this table like i will gonna assign the name notes here and then you can click on this create button and a new note collection or a note table will be created and then inside this table we need to create our columns so as in our case we want to store the information of a note inside this notes table so we need to add a field where we can store the note text and to do that you need to click on this start from scratch button because we don't want to use any template for our table 
so click on the start from scratch and then here you can add a new field inside our notes collection or notes table and we can name this field like note text and after that you need to select the data type so as inside this column we are going to store the text which user entered so we will gonna select string and after that click on this tick button and this field will be added so now after adding this field you need to click on the setting icons and then here we need to give permission for writing and deleting values from our database so there you can see at this point everyone can read data from our notes table but no one can write or delete so here we need to select everyone for write and then select everyone for delete and after doing that click deploy so that these changes will take place so click deploy now and these changes will be live so now after doing that you can move back to your widget tree and then here we need to perform an action to store user note inside that notes table inside that field called note text so if things are a little bit confusing for you then keep going inside this lecture because they will be clear in just a minute so now we want when user will gonna click on the save icon we can store the text which he entered here inside our database and to do that we are going to add an action on this icon so click on this add action button and select this own tab action and after that we need to select the actual action which we want to perform so now select this database section and here select firestore because we want to store some information inside firebase database and then here you can see different operations which we can perform like we can create a document read it update it delete it or curate so so in our case we want to store this information or create a new row so select this create document and then here you need to select the table in which you want to create that document and in the drop down you can see our notes table and after doing that you need to select the field that in which particular field of this table you want to store the data and here you can see the name of our note text field because at this point we got only one field or only one column inside this notes table so that's why we can see its name here and after selecting this note text click here and you will see these fields so firstly you can see the field name which is note text so in note text we want to store the data and then we need to specify the source that from where we want to get that text which we want to store inside this note text field so there you can see we got this value source drop down and here you can select this from variable so basically it is indicating here that either we want to store a specific value inside this note text or we want to take that value from a variable so in our case we don't want to store a specific value but we want to store whatever text user entered here so we need to select from variable and then here we need to select our text field so as our text field is present inside widget state so here you can see this text field so simply select it and that's it so now here we are specifying that whenever user will gonna click on this button then this own tab action will be executed and here we are selecting the action to create document and then we are selecting the table in which this document will be created and after that we are selecting the field of this table where we want to store that particular value and after doing that we are specifying the value source that from where we need to take that value and store it inside this note text and we have specified that we want to take this value from this text field and after doing that we can simply run our application and after doing that we can simply click on this icon and run our application again so as we already got it running here so I will gonna type our note text like I will gonna type first note and then we are going to click on the save button and upon doing it we cannot see any change here but now let's check our database that either this text first note is stored there or not 
So open Firebase and then you can simply refresh this page. But there you can see in our case we got this notes collection here and then inside it we can see this object and when I click on it you can see the information or the detail of this object that we got the value for this note text and the value is first node. So this is the exact value which we entered here. Similarly let's type another value like I will gonna type second note and then click on this icon and after that open the database and there you can see another object is added and when I click on it you can see the value second node. So it means that our data is successfully being stored inside this notes table. So each time we are going to insert a value inside this notes table, a new row will be added inside this table and we will have a specific value for this property note text. And if in your case you are not able to see anything here then make sure that you are clicking on this instant reload so that all the changes which you made here are applied here and then you can test the application. But now inside our application we have added the functionality to store values inside database or create a new node. Subscribe to this channel and get 92% off on our Flutterflow for beginners the complete 2024 course. Link is given in the description. So now after creating new note in the database, the next thing is showing created note list here on screen. So inside this lecture we are going to add the functionality to show the list of created notes inside our application GUI. And to do that we need to add such widget inside our application screen where we can display multiple items. And one such widget is called list view. So as the name suggests this widget is used to show list of items on screen. And in our case we want to show the list of notes which user created so we are going to add that widget. So to add this widget you can click on this icon on this column widget and then you can search for this list view widget so there you can see it. So simply select it and it will be added. So after adding this list view we need to create the GUI for the children of this list view. So here you can click on this icon and then firstly we can add a row widget inside this list view. So select this row widget and it will be added. And after that inside this row we are firstly going to add a text widget because each node contain a text so we need to add a text widget where we can display the text of a node. And after that we are going to add an icon here as well. So here we can search for an icon widget and there you can see so selected and then we can change the icon to something which is indicating a node. So search for node and you will find these icons. So what we can do is to select this icon and it will be added here. So now inside list view we got a row and then inside this row we got a text widget and this icon. So now if we want to equally position this text and this icon then we can select this row and select this space evenly here and we have already done that. So now for each children of this list view we will be able to see a text view and this icon. But now inside this text view we want to show the text which user added while creating that node. So basically we need to populate this list view or show the data which we got inside our node table inside this list view. And to do that you can select this list view and then you can select this backend query. And here we need to add a query to fetch data from database and show it here inside our list view. So click on this add query and then select this query collection. So as far now we want to get data from a collection or from a table so we will select this query collection. And after that select the collection name or the table name. And now here you can select the query type. So as we want to get the list of documents so we are going to select it. And then you can simply click on confirm and then press confirm again. So now by doing that you can see some change here. So basically it is indicating that now this list view is connected with a table inside our database and that table is notes. But after doing that we need to specify that inside this text widget we want to show the note text property of this notes table. So to do that select this text widget and then we need to select the source of this text widget. 
So here press on this icon and then you can see an option of this notes document. So this option will not be there for a regular text widget and it is only there because this text widget is present inside this list view and this list view is connected with this notes table. So that's why we can see this notes document option and then we can see this note text property. So by selecting that we are saying that inside this text view we want to show note text property of notes table. So now at this point if we are going to run our application you will be able to see your notes data here on screen. Like firstly you will see the first node and then the second node. And the reason is for now we have only created two nodes inside our database. And the first one contain the text first node and the second one contain the text second node. And we are able to see that because we have specified that this list view is connected with this notes table and then this text view of list view should display the note text property of notes table. So now after doing that let's simply run our application. So our previous session is expired so we are going to start a new one. So now our application is installed here and there you can see below this text field we got this first node and second node and these are two nodes which we created earlier. Similarly you can see these icons because for each row of list view we also added this icon. But now after doing that let's add a new node like I will gonna write third one and then click on the save button and there you can see immediately we can see a new node here and the reason is the node which we created here is stored in the notes table and that notes table is connected with our list view. So as soon as something is changed in the notes table the data of our list view is also updated so we can see a new node here. So it means that inside our Flutterflow application we are able to fetch data from Firebase successfully. So now after creating a new node and showing the list of available or created nodes to the user on screen, let's work on the GUI of this application a little and after that we are going to explore the delete and update functionality of Firebase by deleting or updating our nodes. So firstly we are going to make the look of this bar better where user can type the content of the node and click on the save button. And to do that what you can do is to add a card widget inside our column. So here I will gonna search for a card widget and add it. So after adding this card widget what we need to do is to select this row widget which contains this text field and this button. And then we need to carefully drag it and put it inside this card widget. So here after doing that you can see now this row widget is enclosed inside this card widget and upon doing that a default border and circular edges are added around it. But there if you will zoom in a little there you can see there is a border or circular edge for this text field as well. So what we can do is to remove this border or circular edge for the text field so that this bar as a whole will gonna look good. And to do that you can select this text field and then you can scroll down. And there you will find input decoration section. So there you can see this input decoration properties and here we can select the border type to none and now the border for text field will be removed and this bar will gonna look good. Similarly we can change this text which is labeled here to the text like new note which will gonna indicate that user will gonna type a new note text here. So what you can do is to select this text field and then you can look for label related section. So there you can see this label property. So we can change the text here to new note. And now you can see this text is being displayed here. And after doing that what we can do is to add some spacing or some padding for this card widget. So select this card and then we are going to select this uniform padding and add a padding of like 5 dp on all the sides. So let's select 6 and that's it. So now you can see a space is added and this bar is looking good. So after improving the GUI of this bottom bar we need to work on the GUI of this list view where we are displaying the results.
So the first thing which we can do is to select this list view and then in the properties we can enable this expanded mode and by doing that it will gonna take all available space. So let's zoom out a little so that we can see things clearly. So on all available space this list view will be displayed and in the bottom we got this bar and now this bar is also at a correct position. And now we need to improve the GUI of children of our list view. So to do that what you can do is to firstly right click on this row widget and then simply copy it. And after that inside this list view we are going to add a card widget. So search for card and then select this card. And here click replace. And now you can see the previous GUI is removed from list view and we only got this card widget. And here we can right click on this card widget and then we can select this paste. And it will gonna add the previous row which was there inside this card widget. So by doing that now for each item of this list we will have circular border and this shadow and that is the magic of this card widget. And after doing that what we can do is to select this row widget and now we can select this property space between because earlier space evenly was not looking good. And after doing that to separate this text and this icon from the borders we can add some padding. So here you can select this uniform padding and then add a padding of like 6 dp on all the sides. And after doing that you can see each element of this list view is looking much better. But there you can see this card view is too attached with the edges. So what you can do is to select this card view which is present inside this list view and then you can add some padding for it as well. So now we are only going to add padding to the left and to the right. So here for the left we are going to add a padding of 8. And then to the right we are also going to add a padding of 8. And similarly if you want to add some top padding like we are going to specify 4 then it is looking much better. So now after adding the padding and then in closing it inside card view this screen is looking much better. And now to see these changes simply run our application again by clicking on this button. So now our application is running again and there you can see this time the GUI is looking a lot better. So I will zoom out a little so that we can see this bottom bar as well. So in the bottom we got this section where user can type a text and create a new node. Like I will gonna create new node here so fourth and then click save and there you can see the new node is added. And similarly the GUI where we are displaying existing nodes are also looking much better as compared to our previous GUI. Subscribe to this channel and get 92% off on our Flutterflow for Beginners, the complete 2024 course. Link is given in the description.